40 years have passed since the last devlog six months ago, but the wait has been for very good reasons. Many different parts of the game have been simultaneously evolving for so long that it never made sense to stop and make a video. Even after I blew past the January release date. I really gotta stop saying dates. All these months, everything I've added and changed has been working toward extending the fun. With each major patch, the game could afford to be a little bit longer each time. First starting at 10 waves in the first ever playtest, and slowly creeping up to 20 where it sat unmoving for months. But now, the game can be played forever. But you won't play it forever, and I'll explain why in a bit. So why is it taking so long to make Endless Mode? Well, there's two big problems with extending the game indefinitely. The first is you're overpowered. You can simultaneously fire two guns and a nuclear carpet bomb while going 200 kilometers per hour. It's very hard to make a suitable challenge for the people who are good at that. The second problem with making the game longer is just repetition. The more you replay a game, the less interesting it becomes. This goes for pretty much anything. You learn how things work and eventually optimize your way to the end. These two issues, challenge and repetition, are so closely linked that they are what make Sandripper Sandripper. I spent a lot of time, and I mean a lot, trying to come up with enemies that could be both a unique challenge, but also allow for multiple fun strategies that you could use each time you encountered them. Sometimes these enemies are designed with a heavier emphasis on fun over challenge. The best example of this would be these little guys. They're called Schlugoids, and they're really stupid. They multiply like slimes, throw each other at you, and hit you with bats. To take them out, you can shoot down their dropships, use enemy lasers against them, run them over, or of course, shoot them with whatever you like. They aren't a super hard threat, but they let you be a little bit creative with how you go about squashing them. On the more challenging end of the spectrum, we have the gunship. It swoops in out of nowhere and dances around you, ignoring all terrain while unloading its minigun. It's extremely disruptive and immediately demands your attention. If you don't take it down before it flies away, it will come back repaired. And if you do manage to take it out, you'll be free from it for a time. In between this imaginary spectrum is everything else in the game. There are many things in Sandripper that could help or hinder you. Some things you can plan for, others are just spontaneous. All of this situational chaos, a highly flexible dual-wield weapon setup, and a bunch of upgrades turn the game into a little sandbox to play in. A little sandbox that will push your limits, but also respect your time. When I decided the main game mode would be endless, I had an ideal time frame in mind. A good run is about 10 minutes long, and a really good run is not much more than 20. Now of course an expert player can go even further, faster, and so should they, after all they've earned it. But an endless mode shouldn't go on forever. It's a bit ironic, but it would be awfully boring if you could spend hours on a single run. And really the trick to keeping things both tight and interesting is enemy health scaling. As you get further, you steadily improve your ammo situation with different upgrades which allows you to use heavier, costlier weapons more frequently. At the same time, you get two opportunities to increase your damage at the cost of using more ammo. So as the round progresses, you can choose your balancing point between raw damage and how often you can fire. This ammo escalation worked great without health scaling, up to a point. You see, eventually the enemy count would get high enough to where you are constantly topped up with ammo whether you need it or not which creates a runaway loop that just trivializes the game. Now with health scaling, you get all the positives of the combat progression while also pushing you and your weapons harder and harder, which makes personal improvement way more satisfying. And this was always the goal with Sand Ripper, a small game with a bit of depth, crazy moments, and tight, expressive combat. And I'm extremely excited to announce that a free Sand Ripper demo is available on Steam right now. Test your skills against 11 increasingly insane waves with its own special leaderboard. It takes 5 seconds to download, so you have no excuses not to rip some sand. It's fully playable on a controller too, although there's no glyphs for PlayStation controllers yet. So go give it a shot! Send me your thoughts on the game, join the Discord, and I'll see you all in the next one.